Welcome everybody to our breakout session, Gender Inequality During COVID-19. My name is Katharina Fürnkrantz. I am a student here at the Diplomatic Academy, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. Um, with me are three distinguished speakers who are all going to talk about how the pandemic has affected gender inequality the issues and the challenges connected to it, but most importantly, the opportunity that those times have presented to us. Um, I'm going to introduce to you now our three speakers um, in the order of their presentations, starting with Dr. Katrina Mada. She is um, an assistant professor at the Institute for Heterodox Economics at the uh, Vienna University for Economics and Business. And also here with us is um, Magistra Ursula Bauer, who is the project director for the implementation of gender mainstreaming in the Vienna city administration. And not here yet, but will join us shortly is Magistra Rössl Hummer, who is the managing director of the Association of Autonomous Austrian Women Shelters. And I would like to thank you once again for joining us today. And the floor is yours, Katrina Mada, please. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I want to give you a very, very short presentation and insights on what our recent project is about. Uh, because we, well, our um, main field of research is the question of unpaid work and the distribution of unpaid work within households. And um, what we've seen with uh, the pandemic um, right at the beginning, really, was that everything shifted to the private. It was um, the paid work that shifted to the private. It was the child care. It was the the care, the whole care that is necessary within the household, everything shifted to the private. And we had this kind of um, experiment <laughs> possibility to um, look into households and find out if the distribution of unpaid work is changed within times like this. Because there was, um, there was an idea that um, when men are at home because of, of um, job losses because of the instrument of Kurzarbeit or because um, they are, have the possibility of working from home, this home office, um, um, yeah, <laughs> possibility that everyone, or, or that, that a lot of people with higher education and higher income um, uh, got. Um, so if they were at home, did, any, did everything um, stay the same um, or did they automatically take over um, more pay, unpaid work? Uh, did they take over childcare? Did they automatically take over household work? Or, um, and I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but that was, that's not what happened. What happened was it stayed the same. It did really stay the same because, um, um, yeah, well, not because. Um, the other idea was that um, we were shifted back to the 50s um, and now traditional gender roles, gender norms uh, were coming back to us, which we thought we'd overcome, um, which was also not the case. Um, if it was, it was the case that everything stayed the same and that um, we had no idea how much unpaid care work and housework uh, women did before the pandemic. So that was the real factor with our, with our results that um, we've seen that um, more than 70% of the women that we've asked um, said that they were, um, that they were responsible for childcare before the pandemic, but also while the pandemic and the lockdown hit. So, um, it was just, well, it wasn't just, but it was the amount of hours that increased enormously um, because of the closing of um, kindergartens, schools, crashes, um, um, university as well. Um, and it was that amount of hours that, um, yeah, that, that just 
increased um, the burden for women, especially for mothers, enormously. So what we've seen was that um, single mothers, which is, which is not a surprise because they usually work um, the most, and not to be cynical about it, but um, um, single mothers do work most hours in every survey that we get. But during the first lockdown, they used to work 15 hours a day. And nine hours of that were unpaid childcare, homeschooling, um, housework. Um, what was surprising to us was that um, there was no, no real difference in having a partner in your own household. So um, mothers within the couple's household with children under 15 had almost the same working hours. So they worked 14 and a half hours a day and nine and a half hours uh, unpaid. So um, yeah, it wasn't really that <laughs> it was the, the own partner that took over so much more of the care work and the housework so that um, there was kind of a distribution of 50-50 uh, in that area. Um, and we've, we've looked at the consequences of that. We looked at the um, physical uh, and psychological health um, um, and health problems that these burdens caused. Um, we've looked at um, We've looked at the questions of whether the age of a child um, changes anything, and we've we've seen that um, mothers' employment um, or mothers' hours of employment rise uh, with the age of a child, um, and fathers' employment stay the same basically. But um, with this crisis, we have this um, age group of children in primary school age six to nine. That, um, that needed the same amount of time as kindergarten kids. So um, everything, really everything was put upside down and it was, it, was, um, it was mothers, especially it was women, but mostly mothers that took over all these um, additional hours of unpaid work. And um, um, yeah, <laughs> and the question, the question really is, and that's what you asked, um, when you started um, this breakout session is whether are whether there are or there aren't any um, any possibilities in this because the idea of men now seeing what what work is necessary for a household to function um, would be <laughs> would be incredible it would be um, the first time that they can actually see that because they used to work from home. Um, but apparently um, that's not enough. Apparently the individual seeing of how much work is necessary in a household doesn't change anything at the structural level. And, um, and that's basically the real problem here because there weren't any political, structural, um, yeah, bigger ideas and policies there to help women, to help mothers in these kind of in these kind of times. And um, I mean, it took us <laughs> a year to get schools back starting. Um, so um, when we look at other um, European countries, we can see we we, we could see uh, uh, a few a few changes there and a few other um, op other opportunities really, but. Um, but in Austria, we've seen a, a huge impact on mothers, which also has impacts on, and it will have impacts on mothers' employment in the future. And that's what I think is the most important thing to look at, because now women, um, women especially mothers, um, won't have <laughs> won't have the same employment opportunities that they had before, because now they proven to stay at home when it's needed. Um, and yeah, we'll see what, what that means in the long run. But that's a short overview, very short overview of what we've done in, in the last last year, <laughs> last year now. Yep, started over a year ago now. Well, thank you very much for this quick overview of your work. And I'm handing the floor over to you, uh, Ursula Bauer. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm very happy to be with you this uh, uh, during this conference. And um, so I'm Ursula Bauer, I'm the head of the gender section of the city of Vienna, and my team is located at the chief executive office, which is really on the top of the hierarchy, which I think is really important to make gender a cross-sectional issue in the city. And our task is, and this is especially necessary in times of crisis and in times of COVID, uh, our task is to integrate a gender perspective to all policies 
such as labor market, childcare, because care work is crucial to cope with the crisis, as Katharina pointed out, uh, urban planning, social housing, health, and social services. And in my input when preparing it, I said, well, maybe I, I could tell you now about the terrible situation. I could uh, give you a lot of data, but I think it is much more interesting uh, to say, well, we can, or we do have a choice. You know, the COVID crisis is a crisis. There's no doubt about it, but uh, you don't have just to sit there and say, well, this inevitably leads to a disaster when it comes to gender inequality. Politicians and administration do have a choice and they have to act. And uh, let me quote an OECD paper from uh, April last year where the OECD clearly pointed out policy responses must be immediate and they must account for women's concerns. This is unfortunately uh, not the case in most uh, recovery funds as uh, a study by Elisabeth Klatzer for who uh, did a gender check, who, she did a gender check for the EU recovery fund, uh, Next Generation EU, and her simple, uh, the, the, the simple outcome of her study is they are, the, these programs, all of these programs are gender blind. So I was very interested to say, well, what is the city doing? You know, the city of Vienna uh, is responsible for daily life of all, uh, of, of all citizens and uh, one of the, the aims of the city is quite clear that every woman should lead an independent and self-determined life. So is this also possible during COVID or will COVID lead to a backlash? I think not necessarily. Uh, of course, COVID magnified all these problems like a burning glass, but if gender is on the agenda during a crisis, we have a choice to make things better. And under, you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily lead to a disaster and it doesn't necessarily lead to, in, to equality, but we have a choice. And I would like to show you by five examples and by five topics that are extremely crucial for coping with the crisis and for making life easier, at least for women, uh, because this is what Katharina pointed out. She said there was no help for women, I think, or for, for mothers. And I think the city with uh, the possibilities they had, they did. And uh, these four, five, sorry, five topics are equal representation, childcare, labor market housing, and violence. So representation is really important because it's always the question who is taking decisions during crisis. And uh, Vienna is one of the rare cities and rare, I think, institutions where women are presented to 50% in the crisis team. This is rather exceptional because uh, when we look all around the world, this is really not the case. Sometimes it's less than 25%. Uh, so 50%, I'm rather proud. And I think this is important for what kind of topics come up and what kind of topics are treated and how decisions are taken. The next topic is, uh, we go to what Katharina already mentioned, it's child care and care work. Uh, in Vienna, I know that we had also the troubles with the schools, but at least child care, uh, child care facilities and kindergartens worked. The city councillor for child care and education, as well as the head of the Viennese kindergarten department, made a clear statement already in the first lockdown. They said, even if only a single child shows up, we are open. So kindergarten were not closed, not even during lockdown, and uh, they remain open. This is really important first for the psych psychological he uh, health of kids and it's also important as we heard for mothers it would be also important for fathers but it's mainly mothers who profit from this health by the city and uh, what is also important is that as we all know that uh, child care teachers are mainly women and we do have protect them because this is there at the forefront because if you have a lot of kids there, of course, there's a certain risk of an infection. And this is why uh, since January 21, we do have uh, COVID self-testing on a sal saliva basis available for, for the employees and for all employees in the communal child care centers, as well as in the private child care centers. This is a certain protection for the personnel. And uh, moreover, what is uh, Elisabeth Glatzer also pointed out in her study when analyzing, uh, analyzing the EU recovery funds, she said it's extremely important to make investments in care work and not only in digital work and in the climate funds. 
And uh, the city decided with the fourth COVID recovery plan to make additional investments, especially in child work infrastructure, uh, sorry, in care work infrastructure, such as extra money for the construction and renovation of childcare centers, schools, and elderly care homes. But what is really important for leading an independent and self-determined life is active labor market. And uh, especially in crisis, uh, an active labor market policy and vocational training play a, a key role to reduce the social damage. In Vienna, we see a dram in Austria and all over the world, we see a dramatic increase of uh, unemployment, mainly among women. So just to give you here the data, we had uh, in January 2021, unemployment went up in general by 26.4%. But for women, it went up by 30%. And it's even more dramatic when you look at the less qualified women, like migrant women, where the unemployment rate went up by 36% compared to 25% for migrant men. So you can really see that, especially for those women, you have to act and you have to offer uh, some trainings and some job perspectives. And this is why the city has uh, increased the grant for further education for women and training uh, up to 10 million euro. But this is not, not, not all. So there's not only 10 million women, but the Viennese uh, Employment Promotion Fund has a clear mission statement, which is to promote uh, equal opportunities, especially for women. And they even have a gender monitoring system in place, so with, which makes sure and is a certain guarantee to have a controlling instrument to make clear that uh, women will have uh, enough support from the city to get new job perspectives and get better qualifications. Because we will know that there will be a shift in the labor market after the COVID crisis. Um, now, apart from having a job, housing is an important pillar for leading a decent and independent life. And especially lockdown made it clear that vulnerable groups uh, might be or they'll run into real troubles for the help with their housing situation. And especially single parent families, which are headed to 90% by women. And taking this into account, there was a new regulation set up uh, for the social housing sector, which means that single parents get priority access to the uh, Vienna social housing system, which is uh, really important and is a big help for vulnerable groups. But unfortunately, this is what I suppose Maria Rösselhummer will point out later, uh, home is not always a safe place for women. Uh, lockdown certainly was a trigger for more violence, for more sexual violence, especially in the private homes. So the city uh, added its, or the city focused much more in offering emergency measures, such as additional emergency apartments for women in uh, violent situations. And there's a fifth uh, women's shelter under construction right now. And, and I think this is really important. Uh, there were extra resources allocated for the Men's Counseling Service Vienna, who is an NGO that works with male per perpetrators, because we cannot, you know, helping women and empowering women is very important, but if we do not change the male perspective and the male attitude towards uh, violence, we will never be, we will never arrive for real gender equality and we will never have an end to violence. So uh, this, I think, shows that we, the city tries to help women here in this very crucial uh, topic. So to come to an end, uh, I think this shows that, uh, you know, situation is bad. There is a crisis, but we have a choice to act in favor of equality. And uh, what is the good thing in Vienna that uh, for more than 50 years now, equality issues are not regarded as an extra, but they're integrated to the mainstream. And they are part of all politics. And uh, there are gender checks for economic and labor market policies anyway. So a gender perspective is added to most, not all, but at least most COVID recovery funds and COVID measures. And this is why I'm even during the crisis proud to say, I think Vienna is and remains a city of gender equality. And we can this take as an example. Well, thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Maria Röstelhummer who has joined us. Thank you for this invitation and uh, thank you Ursula Bauer for your uh, very important 
um, that you uh, talked already ab uh, about this important situation or this, the, the situation of the women who are in a really big crisis, uh, as you already uh, uh, informed us. <clears throat> And um, yes, I will uh, introduce myself at the, uh, at the beginning. My name is Marie Rostoma. I'm the manager of the Austrian Women's Shelter Network. We are the umbrella organization of 15 shelters in Austria. And uh, we are also we are working uh, on combating violence against women, uh, domestic violence, gender-based violence. And in our organization, there are also three other uh, services for, um, for these issues. One of them is called Information Center. Information Center is we are, um, to try to sensitize uh, the, the, the society about this issue. We do a lot of workshops and pro projects on the issue of gender-based violence. And um, we also have um, a telephone counseling uh, for the whole, and uh, I would say a, a nationwide uh, counseling center for women who is called, which is called a Frauen helpline with the number uh, 080033 uh, 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 It's a little bit difficult. I repeat it again. Uh, it's um, 0800 um, 222 and 555. <laughs> Sorry. And this is um, a free of charge uh, counseling center for the whole Austria. And we are responsible for victims of violence. And we feel also responsible for persons of the circumstances of the uh, victims that neighbors can also call or um, uh, the, the, the children of uh, women or some other people who are, as, uh, who are in sorrow of uh, uh, victims. And we also have, since, um, since this COVID or the first lockdown, we also extended our online counseling uh, center, which is also very important. We have a, a help chat where women can um, go in and get every day uh, a six hour counseling for their own for the issues. Yeah, um, maybe I repeat something what Ursula also uh, already has said. But in Austria, in general, the, 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 the prevalence of violence against women is very high. Every fifth woman is a victim of violence, especially male violence. And we also have um, very many femicides in Austria, uh, murders of women, and the corona crisis in intensifies the situation uh, several times over. We have seen a signifi significant increase of domestic violence, gender-based violence during the corona crisis. We know that uh, whenever families have to live closely together, experience shows uh, that tensions, uh, conflicts and violence increases. Um, increases. But uh, rising in unemployment and financial in in insecure, insecurity also leads to an increase in intimate partner violence. But also the output restrictions, lockdowns with the strong restrictions of the social con conducts, places where men normally often stay, like sport fields, clubs, restaurants are closed, and then narrow apartment space, uh, and also the teaching of children at home, uh, uh, homeschooling, and also um, uh, this can really quickly lead to, uh, to, to uh, escalations. And for women and children affected by violence, this means being locked up at home with the perpetrator of violence. Men are willing to use violence, take advantages of the situations. The perpetrator control increases very, very much at the, at the moment. Perpetrators count on the fact that their partner cannot leave so easily, especially in the crisis, and they know that the separation or the divorce or an escape to a women's shelters may be very difficult in these times. And getting help 
calling somewhere or calling the pol police is even more difficult for women and children when the, mm, the perpetrator constantly uh, is constantly present and um, they, they controls the women very much. This is um, this is a fact, and this is uh, the problem. This is also this, the the reason why women are often cannot escape and cannot go in a women's shelters, uh, and um, and also in the countryside. It, sometimes it's, it's so difficult for women to to flee in a shelter because the, the social um, uh, um, control is very high. Everybody knows, everybody knows each other and, um, and, and that everybody controls each other where women go with their children. Therefore, I think this is also was at the beginning the problem that women, uh, that the women shelter were, were not all uh, full and not um, and uh, and many people said okay if the women shelters are not full maybe then we do not have a big problem on the domestic violence uh, and so on they had a fear of this or they, though they had not a fear they had a suspicious um, is this really true that uh, violence against women is um, an, uh, a high or increasing. Uh, yeah, regarding data and statistics, um, uh, we do not have really um, firm data um, um, or to less uh, firm data, um, but there are already clear signs of increase uh, uh, of an increase in domestic violence, and it can be assumed that it will be increase even more the longer the um, this crisis. Um, go forward. According to the police, there is a uh, noticeable increase of domestic violence. The bearing order, this police bearing order, which we have in Austria, uh, the, the, the uh, said we have a that the numbers or the cases of uh, bearing orders are increases by uh, plus 22 percent in the summer in 2020. Mm, uh, this was um, according by the Ministry of Aid Interior. And we also had a, a significant increase in calls to the women's helpline in 2020, especially at the beginning of the Corona pandem pandemic. There was an increase of plus 71, especially in March, April, and in June. And in the end, we had an uh, average of um, uh, increase of plus 33 percent of uh, calls. And in comparison with 2019, the calls for women and girls who are affected by violence was uh, plus 40 percent more than in, um, in 2019. We have 2020, we have a plus 40% more calls um, than in 2019. Yes, and, um, uh, and we noticed an increase of all forms of violence against women and children. W women are confronted with threats, um, with dangerous threats, um, but also with physical violence. But what we can say, especially the psychological violence and the economic uh, violence have increased enormously. Respectively, women who have very big financial problems, um, so many women uh, cannot longer afford the rents uh, to, to, to buy the rent or to, to, to uh, yeah, the rents and housing costs or they cannot pay the fees for lawyers or um, experts' op opinions, like, uh, I don't know the name in, uh, in English, it's Gutachten, Gutachter, and often if the women uh, try to separate uh, them by the partner, they have often uh, a joint custody, and this, uh, or they have problems in joint custody, and if the court decides um, to, to, to invite more good after experts in, in, in this field, 
the, the, the costs are really very high. Uh, it's more that women uh, need in this, in, in, in joint custody uh, issues as higher as more difficult is it for women. Uh, Ursula Bauer has already mentioned the, the, this high um, number of unemployed, uh, unemployed women. And I would say women are really the big uh, losers of the crisis. Women are being uh, pushed back to the to the herds, to the to the yeah to, to home. And I think this is an um, unpresented. Uh, uh, it's a it's a big uh, backlash to to uh, on women, and we are pay. I would say women are paying the for this crisis and and this is really um, I, I I have the fear that women are really in a very difficult situation if the corona um, uh, runs and will not stop anymore. So this is a, a my overview on this issue. I could uh, tell you much more, but I think now maybe you have got a little bit an impression of the situation. Well, thank you very much for your insights as well. And we are moving on to the questions now. And to kick start the round, um, I have a question for uh, Katrina Mather, um, just in regards of the digitalization of jobs and services that we've seen in the past year. Um, do you think that this is an, a driver to reduce gender inequalities or is it maybe too early to say yet? It's a bit early to say it. Um, and um, well, there's a, there's, a few, there's a few issues here. The first issue, I guess, is that a lot of companies and institutions um, we're saying before the crisis, there's no way of working from home because we can't do that technically, um, technologically, digitally. Um, they were proven wrong. So um, that's something that, um, <laughs> that we could see as a positive side of this crisis. Um, so that's, that's the one issue. The other issue is that there is a notion, an idea of digital, digitalization that um, it would bring somehow automatically gender equality, which I doubt. <laughs> I doubt that there is anything, um, well, I think um, digitalization is um, a picture or will be a picture of what, uh, what our society is um, in general. So there is no gender equal, equal digitalization if we don't have any gender equal society. So I guess that's that's the main problem and that's not solved and that's not um, yeah not solved by this pandemic. Even though um, I guess we do have a few a few more possibilities <laughs> now now after after a year working from home in all kinds of branches. Thank you. Um, another question for uh, Ursula Bauer. Um, in regards to uh, the health and social workers, because most of them are women. Um, and the question is they, that they are on the front lines on to battling, well, to battle the spread of um, the pandemic. Uh, and the, the question that kind of hinges on everything is whether this crucial role in fighting the pandemic is actually going to be a sustaining influence in terms of uh, reducing gender inequalities, even in at the systemic level. Well, this is a, <laughs> a difficult question, and uh, I think I'd, I'd stick to what Katarina Mara already said. Uh, if we don't uh, have gender equality before, then of course there will not be any systematic changes. Yeah? But, um, or maybe, could, could you repeat? I, I think I, I didn't get really the, 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 um, the beginning. So given that 70% um, or the majority of um, healthcare and social workers are mm -hmm. women, yeah, and okay. that they obviously influence the fight against the pandemic greatly, 
The question mm -hmm. is, is if this role, this crucial role of them is also going to influence um, the, the systemic structures behind it that um, the systemic level realizes yeah yeah okay yeah okay so, sorry because there, there was a there was a slight uh, a slight problem okay. with under with the um, with the uh, understanding you at the at the beginning well I, I think I, I I I'm not very optimistic that this will make a, a, a difference because women always have been, and we see that all over the world with any kind of crisis, they are always the lender of the last resort. And um, you take it for granted that they are there and they, they take they take care of the paid. So they do the care work in the paid sector uh, for less money and they do uh, take care of the care work at home uh, without being paid for it. And um, I think as long as politics uh, don't make a clear statement and say, yes, we want to, uh, to have a better situation and to give more money to the health sector, which I think in Austria, we still have the situation and also in Vienna that uh, we have at least a good social system in place. And we did not privatize too much of our hospitals uh, system, which is also good for women because this makes a difference in the way they are employed in the health sector. But um, I think, well, there's, you know, at the beginning of the first lockdown, we had this applause. Everybody said, wow, great, yes, oh, wow. Uh, and um, I, I, I don't think that this will make a big difference. Everybody will say, well, thank you, and it's great that you do it. But the most important thing, and this comes to, the, to your first question to Katarina, I think what is uh, at, in the focus at the moment is we need digitalization, digitalization, digitalization. And uh, this is where all the money goes, and this is where mainly men hold uh, the important positions. This is where men hold uh, the, the management positions and they take the decisions. And in the health sector, you see it's mainly women, and this is not regarded the same. They, 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 even if we need it now, uh, we do not contribute to this the same importance than to digitalization. So uh, unfortunately, no, I don't think that this will make a change. Thank you. Um, I have a question from Anna Reindl. Um, she's asking for, for all of you, um, do you think that the Corona crisis will help to rethink the weak situation of gender equality we have at this moment? I would say a few words to this uh, digitalization. Um, the problem what we have at the moment that so the women are really the, the complaints that um, they do not have enough hard uh, um, 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 soft work, uh, so, um, no, uh, laptops and computers and not uh, access to the internet for the children. If they do a lot of uh, homes, home office and homeschooling, then now we have really a big problem with this. Digitalization is really, it's great and we learn a lot and we can uh, go in contact with uh, so many people in, in, in around the world with, uh, with all these Zoom meetings and all those all these meetings and uh, this is this is wonderful yeah it's this is uh, is a good thing but the bad uh, the, the the opposite of them is that really the so many women have too less um, support in this uh, and, uh, and, and and we think we have to uh, really notice this also yeah I don't know if you have you also made these experiences, but um, we have uh, I've got a lot of calls like this that women do not have enough support of um, the digitalizations. Uh, regarding this uh, gender equality gap, um, as I already mentioned, we must state that uh, with the, uh, with all clarity that the social role for, of women has uh, deteriorated um, massively. Um, it's really um, very, very bad. And they are slipping more and more into poverty and violence. I think we, um, and also this um, gender equality uh, is not a driver on, or the corona is not a driver of uh, in, um, increasing gender equality. I think it's the opposite. The, the uh, pandemic um, is a 
break man or poison of gender equality, I would say. And um, in our, uh, in our um, experiences, he always says violence does not begin with the phys uh, uh, physical violence. It begins with gender equality or gender inequality, with discrimination and you know, with um, uh, disadvantages against women. And in Austria, we are very far away from real equality. The gender gap is very high in Austria, and it will get uh, even higher with, the, with this pandemic. I would say we uh, go in uh, uh, backwards, not forwards. Uh, I think that still, um, for the first time, I try to be a bit optimistic. <laughs> And I think that still we do have a chance to uh, make some sh to make a shift and to get in a better direction. Because what I uh, think is it's the first time, and I'm working with gender equality for more than 25 years now in institutions. And what I see for the first time is that at least it remains a topic. It uh, it's a topic in the mainstream media, and even when mainstream media reported that there reported about it, usually you get a shitstorm and you have one of these anti-feminists who start telling you or even well-educated uh, people tell you that uh, now we do have much bigger problems and we should not take a look too close at this uh, gender pay gap which will lead, which after some years will uh, dissolve completely if women get better jobs, blah, 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 you know, all that. But I think it's, so it's, it's really it's the first time that uh, there is no doubt about it and there is it's not questioned anymore and it's on the it, 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 it's a topic that remains uh in the media in the social media and um it will be harder to get rid of this discussion this doesn't necessarily mean that we will have a chance to change the system right now but uh, i think that more women than before who always said well we are not feminists because this is too radical etc that they feel really for the first time that they there is a problem and that we have to react. And I hope that, um, well, also politicians will get a certain kind of pressure from the basics and um, set more, more decisions in favor of gender equality. And I showed you that at least in Vienna, there have been decisions that are better and more in favor of women during the crisis. So I see that I think that there's a slight chance that uh, well, we are not at a tipping point, but we are at least in a situation where we um, where we can be more serious about it and and uh, get more dynamic into it on the long run. Mm -hmm. You're very optimistic. <laughs> I'm not so. I have to, you know. <laughs> yeah, some you respect. Mean... I get too much depressed. <laughs> yeah, it's good, but I would say in Vienna, it's uh, there is a little bit more hope than in, Gen in the whole Austria because we have a, a government uh, and a minister for women's affairs who are not really interested in feminism, feminism and gender equality, and uh, so this is really a problem. I would say, therefore, we go uh, again on the eighth of March to the street and then go. The demonstration and uh, fight for women's rights and so on. Yeah, uh, but yeah. <laughs> hmm. I have another question from Natalia P Piorovic, um, and you can take the floor, Natalia, please. Uh, thank you for the floor. Uh, I was really saddened to hear about the increase of violence against women uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic. And I was wondering if uh, there has been any action taken by this by the state, by the central government uh, throughout the pandemic to address this issue. Has there been any new uh, programs implemented or additional funding? Um, we have got uh, financial support um, uh, uh, one, uh, at the beginning. Uh, of this uh, uh, corona pandemic. This was uh, for the online uh, uh, counseling. Uh, this was uh, 20,000 euro. And, um, and we had an increase of 12% uh, for the women's helpline. All the women's counseling center have got 12% um, uh, 12, 12 more uh, budget um, for the 
for all this support for the women, but this is really not enough. This is just peanuts, I would say. And, um, and they are not really uh, new mes measures or effect effective message, message Measures uh, um, for for uh, to 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 um, support uh, women in this uh, crisis situation, and uh, this is really a pity. I, I, we are really unhappy about this. We we always say we need more. For example, we have an, uh, a platform of thirty organization who are. Uh, who are working together. It's called Allianz Gewaltfrei Leben or Allianz uh, free of, Living Free of Violence. And we um, always um, ask for 200, 210 million per year for equal uh, gender equality and also for the, um, uh, gen, um, um, uh, uh, violence against women or for prevention work. Yeah? So we need more money. This is really important, especially for the for awareness campaigns and also for trainings, uh, trainings all of the professionals who are working in the field of domestic violence, the, the judge, the court, the, the prosecutors, the police, all of them, they need really more trainings. There has to be more sensitized, there has to be, and so on. So uh, lots of measures uh, has, should be done, but it's, it's really not, um, yeah, we are waiting. I would say we, we are waiting and waiting, <laughs> yeah. But it's good that Vienna will uh, open in the next time of uh, the fifth of shelter, which is really good. But on the other hand, we have lost uh, two shelters in Austria and in, in Salzburg. And this is really a, a, a catastrophe, a catastroph catastrophal situation that um, uh, uh, women uh, shelters are, um, we, uh, will or other organization will take over shelters who has no experiences in this in this field, in, no experiences in this in this work, and um, uh, these are a very negative um, development. There is one last question by Brigitte Lager. Please, could you take the floor? Hi, good afternoon. Um, first of all, thank you for the very interesting insights you gave us. Um, since I'm currently writing my thesis about human trafficking for sexual exploitation in Europe and in particular here in Austria, I would be interesting, interested if you have any insights on how the pandemic affected the issue of human trafficking and the situation of the victims here in Austria. Thank you. I'm not so well informed at the moment about this um, problem and about this uh, violence um, against women. So I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not really well informed about it. I cannot really answer you correctly. We already have to close the session um, as we are already running a bit late, but I would like to thank you once again for joining us today. And I hope that we have gained an insight in how to use this pandemic as a true chance to reduce gender inequality. I would like to remind the audience that we are going to take a break now until 3.45. Um, the break is going to be recorded and the next breakout session is going to be Women in Peace Operations. Thank you. <laughs>